Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo from rubyguides.com and in this video you're going to learn about object-oriented programming. More specifically, we're going to talk about something that gets asked a lot and that is what classes should you create? What classes should you create and what do you put in these classes? What methods go in what, in what classes, right? So what classes do you need to create and what methods do you put on each class? So I want to give you some ideas, some principles, so you can know how to do this. Of course, you're going to improve as you gain experience as a developer, as you try new things, as you keep learning, all of that is going to improve with time. But I'm going to give you some basic guidelines so you know what to do when you want to write object-oriented code, okay? So here we go. I have this little diagram that I'm going to use to do our explanation. And the first thing is we have to talk, of course, about classes. And classes, as you might know, they create uh, objects. Okay, so that's like the basics of the object-oriented programming classes create objects because the class is like a blueprint, right? It's like a the, the blueprint to create a building, but instead of buildings, we create objects, okay? So what do objects have themselves? Well, objects themselves, they have data and uh, for by data in Ruby, we use instance variables basically to store data. So each one of the objects that we create from the class has data. And the reason I have to explain this is because we first have to understand what the purpose of a class is and how a class works to be able to understand why do we create classes and therefore what classes we need to create, okay? So a class itself has methods, okay? So the object doesn't have methods, it's the class that has method thanks to its object. So we have classes, we have objects, objects have data, so instance variables and classes have methods, which is basically how we do things. Methods are like uh, commands, instructions, behavior, behavior, um, what to do, things to, doing things, right? Th doing things, that's what method are, okay? If you need to dig deeper into those, into these two um, topics, have videos and articles to explain this, okay? So, knowing this, how do we understand what classes should you create? Well, um, we, that depends on the project. So first, this comes down to project planning, right? Because let me duplicate this. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that our project is to write the software, write the software for a, for a coffee machine, for a coffee machine that has, imagine it has an LCD screen, an LCD display that shows how, many, how much water is remaining, how much coffee is remaining, how many coffees can you make with this amount of coffee and water, uh, all of this information, what temperature you want the water. Imagine it's like a very expensive, very fancy kind of coffee machine. Uh, you need to write shof software for it. And you're going to use Ruby. Okay, there is something called embedded Ruby, um, mRuby, that could be used for something like this, right? It's embedded Ruby. Um, okay, so what classes do we need for this coffee machine? Well, we need a coffee, no, 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 nothing special here. We need a coffee machine class, right? <laughs> Tada! It's not that, uh, that, that hard. So, but I'm going to show you more examples. I use all more complicated examples. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. We just start with fundamentals. So, a coffee machine is going to create 
uh, an object that has data. So what kind of data is going to have? Well, it's going to have the water. So the water that we have left. So the, the water percentage is going to have coffee. Let's say it stores coffee, coffee beans and it grounds them when you make the coffee. Well, and we want to keep track because remember we are talking about a very fancy, very expensive um, coffee machine that keeps track of all of this information. I showed you this into an LCD screen, right? We're writing the software for that. Well, you will write a coffee machine class and this coffee machine class is going to create a coffee machine object that knows this information. This could also be the temperature um, that's set, tem set temp temperature, um, things like that. That could be our instance variables or data. The methods, what, what, would, what kind of methods would you have? Well, let's think about that. What does the coffee machine do? <laughs> it's not stand that special. In this case, we will have green the beans. We green the beans so we get ground coffee so we can make the coffee. So this could be what one possible method. Can you think of other another method? Well, of course, once we green the beans, we, we are going to have another method that's called um, hot water, get hot water, right? Or pour hot, wa wa hot water over our ground coffee. So we can make the coffee. We can just make, call this make coffee, just to keep it simple, right? So that will be another method. It doesn't have to be the arrow like this. Just made it because it makes logical sense to be that after the other, right? Uh, let me give you some arrows there. So that will be your methods. What will be a method that you would never put in a coffee machine. What's a thing that a coffee machine doesn't do, right? Let's think about that. Well, it's not going to uh, make uh, breakfast, for example. It's not going to not going to cook your bacon, for example, right? So that will be if I can paint this with another color. So. I, uh, not this. Give me a moment, please. Um, so I find how to bind this into another color. Uh, to, to, to here, I think. Style. I just want to change the. Oh, that's fancy. I like that. Let's use that. Uh, I wanted to paint this red or something. You see, it is not. Not what you would do, right? Because coffee machines don't cook bacon. And this is the principle that's called, this has a name, of course, it's called um, cohesion. So let me write that for you. So these object oriented principles, and one of them is called it's called cohesion. And co cohesion means um, we only put things into our class that make sense. That is one of the logical um, behaviors, one of the logical actions that go with this class. So another class that would, would make sense could be refill water, right? Like refill. Let me see if we can do this. Well, yeah, that's my side, by the way. Uh, I cut it in the, in the clipboard. So if you're new here, you might want to visit my website, rubyhides.com. I didn't explicitly prepare that, but there you go. So yeah, you can make also um, refill water. Uh, what refill water does? What does refill water do? Well, it interacts with the water level. So we increase, increase water level. So that means something like water plus 10. will look something like this, right? 
So notice that for this method, which we will name something like refill def for the file refi refill water, right? Something like that. Just imagine something like that. Just that for now. Refill water, right? What we do is we interact with the data that the coffee machine does, has, as well as the green beans, grind beans. Grind beans is going to um, use up some coffee beans. So that means if we decrease the beans minus five, but also it's going to increase the ground coffee, right? Which I we don't have here, but you can get the idea. So the when we're talking about cohesion, we're talking about methods that work with the data that this class has. So that's cohesion. Uh, methods, methods that work together with the class data. So that's a very important principle. And this is your guidance. This is your guidance principle. Write methods that make sense and use this um, yeah, use the instance variables of this class, okay? So there is that. So that's cohesion. Of course, there's another principle, which is called coupling. Coupling. These are more, a, a bit more complex. Um, that's where, and I don't even remember the explanation for that. I have an article, you can look this up. But the most important principle that you need to understand is this cohesion principle, okay? So that means no cooking bacon because first of all, we don't have any bacon in here to cook. We don't have any instance variable for bacon. So we can even cook bacon because we don't have it and we don't have any way for cooking. So no cooking bacon for your coffee machine, right? I know that's kind of, makes sense, but that's the answer to your question. What do you put in your class? Well, cohesion is your answer, okay? Now, let me give you another example. Let's say that we have a slightly more complicated program, okay? We have a video game, for example. Well, a video game is going to have multiple things. You just have to make this, do this. Make a list, make a list of the different things, the intervening elements of the elements that participate in your program. So in all the schools, some other school people, what they do, they make a list of nouns, right? They make like a list of nouns. Uh, that's going to be a list of the things that participate in your program that's going to become your classes, right? So for example, in a video game, we're going to have, what are we going to have? We're going to have like monsters or enemies, right? Let's say monsters. We're going to have uh, the player character, player character. Notice in here, I'm not writing down um, health points because health points is a characteristic of the player character or of the monster. So that's going to be data, right? It's going to be this. So what are things we have in a video game? Well, we have like, and we have items, have maps, right? All of these things are going to become classes, okay? And then we can also make a list of the different axioms. This is like very old school, but it's one way to think about it. Uh, of the axioms that, that is going to be verbs, right? So that means things that your classes do. So that's going to be things like, um, Recover HP, 
uh, health points. Um, attack enemy um, by item or use item. Um, things like that. So you make a list of things that the different participants, the di which is this, the different participants in your code are going to do. And that's going to become the methods that go with these characters right here. So this is like your list of participating characters or things. And this is like the what do these do, right? And how do you mix these together in a class? Well, cohesion, right? Because to attack, uh, to recover HP, you need some class that has, you need a class that, that has some HP to recover. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to have a recover HP method. You see that? Okay. So it doesn't make sense to have a recover HP method if the class doesn't have HP, health points, right? So that's cohesion right there. Okay. So I hope that helps um, get the, uh, the general picture of how this works. Uh, just practice, just come up with some small project ideas, uh, see how this works. And sometimes you already have these classes, for example, for a file, if you want to open a file in Ruby, you already have a file class. So you didn't need to create it. Okay, so you want to create an array, you already have an array class. So you don't need to create it. So there is some built-in classes, but when you want to design your own program, you need to go through this process. You need to think, okay, what elements are in my program? What is my program all about? Who is going to use this program? What kind of data information I need to know about the different things in my program. What do the things in my program do? Right, that will be the verbs. And what things make logical sense together? Okay, so I really hope this helps. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this, okay? Remember to use a quick overview so you get a general idea of what classes to create and where, what methods to put in what classes. So I hope that helped. Uh, please click the like button for me if you find this useful and some more people can find this video. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because I will allow you to find more videos and where I'm go when I go live streaming and things like that. And finally, visit, visit my website rubyguides.com rubyguards.com. So thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.